Another top al-Qaeda terrorist is dead, killed more than a dozen years after his most notorious crime. Fazul Abdullah Mohammed was responsible for the 1998 bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. They killed 224 people, including 12 Americans. The terrorist mastermind was high on the FBI's most wanted list, but he managed to elude authorities until this weekend. And he accidentally ran into a checkpoint in Somalia and was killed in a gun battle. A U.S. official says Muhammad's identity was confirmed through DNA. Joining us now, CBS News national security analyst Juan Zarate, who was also on the federal prosecution team assigned to the embassy bombing case in the late 90s. So this obviously holds special significance for you. Yeah, he's a figure well known to those of us involved in this uh, in this case. I would think so a figure well known to, to all of you. But give us a sense of, of his significance within the organization here. Uh, was he still significant enough that this death is actually a game changer? This, is, I think, is a game changer in East Africa, Erica, because because he was a key field general for al-Qaeda in East Africa, actually one of the few remaining with deep ties to bin Laden and al-Qaeda Central. Uh, and so his removal from the battlefield takes away somebody who was not only well known in the broader network, but had the ability to train people, uh, to fund the operations, and to link what was happening in East Africa to the other elements of the global movement. So we start, we're seeing his killing now, which, which in essence was a little bit of dumb luck, but, but still a, a good thing to, to take right. him off of the, off of the roster, of course, following the, the death of Osama bin Laden. Um, it seems like there's a things are speeding up almost. There's a pace and, and a more aggressive nature to going after folks. Absolutely. I think we did get lucky here. It's sometimes better to be lucky than good. But in, in this instance, I think what you have is U.S. officials, in particular in the counterterrorism community around the world, trying very hard to use the momentum of the killing of bin Laden to break the back of senior al-Qaeda leadership. And not just the leadership that we think remains in Pakistan and Afghanistan, but the leadership of the regional affiliates and regional groups like Harun Fazul uh, in East Africa. And so you're going to see more aggressive activity, not just in Pakistan, but in Yemen, East Africa, North Africa, an attempt to really keep al-Qaeda on its heels. And do you think that al-Qaeda is actually feeling that pressure? Is that the sense you, you get from the chatter? I think absolutely. I think uh, counterterrorism officials are saying that they think al-Qaeda senior leadership have gone to ground. They know that they're being hunted. Uh, and I think they've seen the pressure uh, that the U.S. has been applying. Lastly, real quickly, how, how close, though, are all these different organizations still connected in places like Yemen, in places like Somalia? Well, a lot of them have senior al-Qaeda leaders from the old Soviet Mujahideen, the fight against the Soviets in Afghanistan. Harun Fazul, the Fazul Mohammed, who was killed in East Africa, was one of those figures. You have others like Nasr al-Waishi in Yemen, who is closely tied to bin Laden, who is running the operations in Yemen, along with Anwar al laki the Yemeni American cleric. And so you have these key figures that provide the ligaments to the broader movement. If you remove them, you start to implode the movement and weaken the ties. All right. Wanzarate, always good to have you with us. Juan, thanks, thanks. Erica.